I want to talk to you about some of the recent modifications that I've done to my third generation Glock 19. We'll talk about the process and some of the um, items that I used. Alright, so one of the first things that I noticed I didn't really like about this uh, particular pistol was the, the grip on it. The factory grip is obviously just polymer and I felt that it was a little bit too slick. Instead I wanted something that was more textured and more grippy. I also didn't like the factory magazine release. I felt that it was too small and placed too far forward for my hand to kind of reach without having to kind of slide the frame sideways, or sideways and do some kind of funky business on the range. Um, so I thought about, hey, you know, couldn't a guy just drop in a Gen 4 mag release? It's not that big of a deal. So I went ahead and uh, tried resourcing this online and I couldn't really find an exact how-to or anybody really saying how to do it because everyone just kind of naysayed it and said that it was just too hard to do because the Gen 4 mag release was too large where the spring actually entered the uh, magazine release was too far back and it just wouldn't work. So instead I decided to go ahead and do it myself. Um, I saw online that there's a company who charged you, I think it was about 45 or $49. You can send them off your frame and they'll do the modification and send it back to you. I kind of looked at it like, hey, the uh, magazine catch is like $9. I can probably do this myself and save myself the money and the time of my pistol not being at my house. Plus, it's something kind of cool that I can tell my friends that I did it myself. So, the items that I needed to do this modification were a, um, a sharp razor knife. I used a brand new blade. I used my heat gun. And obviously, you're going to need a Generation 4 mag release. An important note about the heat gun, obviously, it can generate uh, high temperatures. The polymer frame here with the Glock is said to be able to resist temperatures up to 500 degrees. Although if you hold your heat gun too close to it on a high setting, you, you can certainly melt the plastic. So I used the heat gun. I applied a little bit of heat to the source, about five to eight seconds worth. And then I took my razor knife and I trimmed off about a uh, 16th of an inch to an eighth of an inch at a time. I trimmed off a little bit at a time and then I would reinsert my generation four mag release and see how much further I needed to trim off. In doing so, I made sure that I only took off what I needed. Uh, when you do this, you'll have a nice clean fit. It's important for a uh, for good function and also for good cosmetic appearance. Once you trim off the left hand side using your razor knife, you need to flip the frame over and add either more plastic or epoxy the right hand side of the frame. I've already done this in this uh, before this video was shot, so you won't be able to actually see how big the uh, the opening is. But it's a, it's about three sixteenths of an inch. All I did is I took the uh, I took the Generation Three Mag Catch, and I actually trimmed off a little bit of material off this right hand side where the shoulder is. I trimmed off a little bit more than I needed. I epoxied it in place and let it dry. Once it dry, was dried, I went ahead and I filed it down a little bit at a, at a little, and I checked um, the, the fit of it. In doing so, I made sure that I had a nice tight fit, uh, but it was still able to function correctly. So it looks really good. Once you modify the frame, you're then going to need to go ahead and modify the magazine catch itself. Um, where the Generation uh, 4 magazine release spring enters is much uh, further to the right hand side of the frame than the generation 3. So you're going to actually need to remove some of the material, enlarge the opening, and uh, extend how far that spring travels in the generation 3, or the 4 correction. Alright, so what you're going to need to do to the, to the generation 4 magazine catch. I recommend using the polymer one because it's easier to modify than the aluminum one uh, unless you have a end mill or you have a, a way to actually cut a nice groove in here. You're going to need to go ahead and apply epoxy to the first hole here. It looks yellow in this picture, it's the dried epoxy. The reason being is because you need to cut a recess in here for the spring to travel. So once you fill this hole with epoxy and let it dry, um, take out a uh, your dig digital calipers if you own a pair. If not, you can buy a pair. They're, they're reasonably cheap. I use mine quite often. 
and measure precisely from the shoulder shaft on the uh, right hand side of the frame or the mag release to where the magazine release spring would have entered your generation 3 mag release and you see it's approximately uh, 0.38 or 39 inches so take your generation 4 mag release measure again from that shoulder shaft and make that first cut into that generation 4 mag release and you'll see that you'll almost remove the material all the way to where that spring would stop come back to your 3 mag release measured where the end of that opening is and that's approximately at 0.4 uh, inches so transfer that back over your gen 4 mag release make that cut then measure to where the overall stop point is and that's approximately 0.54 inches again bring that over to your generation mag 4 release make that cut and then trim off the uh, the port portion in the middle so that your spring can actually travel along that uh, that recessed groove again it's it's really easy to do it takes a little bit of time a little bit of effort uh, you don't have to use a special tool but it makes it a little bit easier in doing so and that's how you would install the generation 4 mag release on the gen 3 frame the next thing I did is I wanted to go ahead and modify my grip. I noticed that there's a company called Glockworks. They do this uh, great work that I've seen online where they texture your, your, your frame in um, silicone carbide. They can, uh, they can take off your back strap so your hand can get further in on your frame and they can also fill your back strap with epoxy. I chose to do this myself. It cost me maybe about $18. Uh, you can pay you know excess of $200 for this modification. How I did it, is I used a, an epoxy from West Systems called G-Flex. I chose the, the G-Flex because it came in smaller bottles. It was a little bit less expensive than their, their, uh, their other epoxy. And it is somewhat flexible. Um, I chose that because if my frame was ever dropped uh, or kicked or somehow uh, abused in a way that it shouldn't have been, um, that hopefully the epoxy would, would give a little bit and not chip off. I also purchased their uh, 406 adhesive filler and that's to thicken the epoxy so that when you add it into your back strap and when you also paste it onto your frame that you don't get any sagging or running. I purchased silicone carbide grit, uh, 80 grit. Uh, I purchased it online. You can get it from any kind of rock tumbling uh, website where they, they sell rock polishes or rock tumbling media. It's really inexpensive. I paid about nine dollars or so. Um, and one little little uh, pouch of this is more than enough to do your frame. And then I use Rust-Oleum truck bed coating. All right, so talking about the actual process, it's it's very simple to do. Um, I went ahead and I hand sanded down the raised portion of the grip on both sides. And I did that because when you paste on your epoxy and you do the um, silicone carbide. If you don't sand it down, you'll have a raised lip right here, and I didn't like that, so I wanted it to be nice and smooth, so I sanded that all the way down. I, I did it by hand, uh, so I wouldn't re uh, remove too much material. It took a little bit more time, but it turned out really nice. I also removed the back strap on here, so that my hand could get a little bit tighter in on the frame. The tool that I used for that was my good old Harbor Freight uh, belt sander and disc sander uh, combination. I bought this for $79 at Harbor Freight. Uh, I used it for a few other things. It's a great tool to have and very easy to use. All you do is you run your, uh, you run your belt sander up and down your, your back strap here and it's very easy to remove. Uh, you can choose to utilize an 80, uh, 80 grit belt or a 120 belt. Uh, the 120 I feel is a little bit safer so you don't re remove too much material at once. Once I uh, removed that back strap, of course, ahead of time, excuse me, I kind of got ahead of myself. Before that, I went ahead and I epoxied in the hole here on the back strap. Reason being is that when you remove the portion of your back strap here, that hump, you don't want to get the uh, material too thin here or cut through it. 
so you epoxy it first. Using the West system and their adhesive filler, I was able to achieve a, uh, a almost kind of a peanut butter like texture to my epoxy. And when I put it inside, um, it didn't sag, it didn't uh, run, it didn't go anywhere near my fire control group. It was a really great product to use. Um, as it dried, I went ahead and I grooved it properly for the uh, magazine so that if I inserted the magazine and it got a little cockeyed, it would just hit this little lip here and slide right in there. Really easy to do. On the front of the, uh, of the front strap of the frame here, I went in and I, and I filled it with epoxy, those little holes that are right there, um, almost the texturing. I filled that with epoxy again when I did the, um, the silicon carbide. So it's nice and kind of kind of flush right there. So the process, again, to do the frame, uh, sand down your, your grit portions of it so you have a nice smooth uh, texture on both sides and all around the back strap so you have a nice smooth even uh, application of the silicon carbide. Mix your epoxy um, into a paste. Uh, I use the filler again to achieve kind of a peanut butter texture so it wouldn't sag or run. I then just spread it onto my frame. I used uh, rubber gloves and it's my fingers. Spread it on, onto the frame where I want it to, to be. Once that was on there, I sprinkled on my silicone carbide just by hand and, uh, and, and that was it. You know, I let it dry. As it was drying, I actually took a razor blade and, uh, and I touched up some of the lines. So I just took this razor blade, I pushed down the media or the silicone carbide or I removed some of it so that I would have a nice straight line. Nice straight clean line. It's really easy to do. Now once that kind of dried, I kind of had a skateboard grip type of uh, feel to it and it had a little bit of that kind of uh, sheen that you have with this uh, skateboard grip. I didn't really like that kind of uh, blingy look to it. So I use this Rust-Oleum truck bed coating. I've used this product before on my frame. I actually sprayed it. Uh, it looks really nice. It has a little bit of texture. And I went ahead and I sprayed the uh, grip here with it. And what that did is it kind of took down some of the uh, gritty-like texture of it by filling it in with a little bit of the truck bed texturing and the paint. And it also took down some of that sheen, giving it more of a, uh, a nice black look to it. So that's the process for uh, adding a Gen 4 mag release to your Gen 3 Glock and doing your own grip modification. This whole process will save you easily 250 bucks and only run you about uh, $20 in parts. It's really easy to do. Don't be afraid to do it yourself. Thanks.